Does that sound better? Okay. Here you go. Here's your, here's your chance. 
They're going to worship in the offering. Amen. Y'all say this with me. Remember, the offering plate is up front. You can drop it in on the way in or drop it in on the way out. If you've already dropped it in, just lift up your hand. If you've uh, got it in your hand, just go ahead and hold it up. We're going to say this together. I lift my offering to you that it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. I will release my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Praise God. Go ahead, Brandon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Anybody have an outspoken request this morning? Yeah. Um, please keep my niece's husband, Kelly Corbett, in prayer. Tomorrow he starts his first round of chemo for six weeks every day of the week. He does have small cell carcinoma in his arm. So he's only like 21 years old. Uh, and he does need he does need to look to the what the Lord. Um, so please keep Anyone else this morning? Uplifted hands, special needs, lost loved ones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house, Lord God, and to be amongst our people, Father. We know where two or three are gathered. You're there in the midst. Father, we just ask you to minister my to each and every heart, each and every life. You see the needs that we stand in need of, supply them according to your riches your glory, the testimony would be given. And Father, in all praise and honor would go to you, Lord. Father, we just ask that you administer and remain of this service and on our hearts to receive the message, Lord God, and touch the pastor as he delivers. And Father, we'll thank you for everything you said. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said. Hey, amen, amen, amen. Hold on, before I forget. Where's Sister Vicky? Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for all the effort that we put into Honey Ramen, first off. Uh, because there was a lot of behind-the-scenes things done ahead of time, and there was yes. a lot of behind-the-scenes things done cleaning up. So I, we appreciate that. Um, <coughs> CWF is not going to have a meeting this Wednesday, which would actually be the very first Wednesday in November. We're going to have it on the 8th, and it'll be a nighttime meeting at 7 o'clock. Also, this week, the Stockings for Soldiers came out. I don't have them with me today, but I will next Sunday. If you took one last year and you would like to take one this year, uh, be happy for you to do that. I'm going to go and get as many as we turned in last year, because we turned in more than we got originally, um, simply because we had extra items donated. And just a reminder, if you don't want to take a stocking yourself, there are items that you can pick up easily at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General or whatever. The uh, HDA items are always welcome. Shampoo, cream rinse, uh, lotion, shower gel, that type of thing for men and women because we have male and female soldiers. Uh, card games, puzzle books, um, small snacks, Things that, not necessarily chocolate, but most anything else, hard candies, uh, uh, Slim Jims, Nabs, etc., that type of thing. And we also have stockings every year for our four-legged soldiers. Because some of you have taken pets, stockings in the past, and, and that's a, a need also. It lets them know that there's someone out there thinking about them and that we know they're away from home and that they're out there defending our freedom. Um, and like I said, I will have those with me next time. So if you if you know you want multiples or something, it, let me know at the end. I, I'll be glad to get extras, but I'm going to go start with what we finished with last year. Vicki, when will they do, be due back? I, I think Thanksgiving week is the week that they're due back. Um, uh, I, I actually didn't read that far. I just seen the announcement from Paul, Paul Finnelheim and I seen the announcement from, from Denise who yeah. coordinates it for this area out of the library in the world. So I just hadn't gotten by there and thought, okay, I'll get mine before next Sunday and just go ahead and mention it to everybody so they can start buying. It really is not that expensive. You can stuff a stocking for about 20 bucks. And like I said, it's well worth it. 
because it's just it's just a good project. Anyway, thank you, thank you. Didn't God do it? All the time. All the time. All the time. Yes, 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 yes. Turn it back on. Okay. There we go. There we go. I stand back up. I mean, those it gets sweeter as the days go by. Amen. Apprehended that for which I also apprehended 
of Christ Jesus. I'm going to ease that up a little bit more. Yeah. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Y'all say one thing. One thing. I do. I do. Forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press. Y'all say press. Press. For the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God is so, so awesome. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, Lord, to help us, God, to be ready for whatever's coming down, Lord, that we're coming down the pike, the prophetic pike, Lord. We know, God, that the rapture is on the way. Lord, again, uh, earth is preparing for war, but heaven is preparing for a wedding. And we thank you for that. And we ask you right now, God, to do what you do best, and that is help us to see you in a new and powerful and trustworthy way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And church said, Amen. Amen, amen, and you be seated. On the way down, tell somebody, the past is behind, behind us. us. The, the future is ahead of us. us. God, God is with us. us. And, and nothing, nothing, and nothing, nothing shall, shall be impossible. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand out <laughs> of praise. Amen, amen. Uh, before we get started, I, I told them, I, I told them I was, they, they sent me a me message this morning and told me, that's okay, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, as we were leaving Virginia yesterday, guess who I met? I met Chris Carter. Some of y'all looked at me like the mule looking at the gate. All of the sports fans, Minnesota Vikings, Chris Carter, Paul Clay. And I got all excited. I got my picture taken. I started to put it up here. Then I found out, yes, his name. <laughs> it's Chris Carter, but it wasn't him. <laughs> and he said, he's big, just like Chris Carter. And he said, he. Honestly, Chris Carter, I know Chris Carter. He's out there watching Chris and Rhonda, his wife. Uh, it was right kind of funny. He said one of his girlfriends one time in college thought he was Chris Carter, or after college thought he was Chris Carter, and dated him for months before she found out he weren't the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But he, he did play basketball, so he, he, he is a good guy, him and his wife. And so uh, I'm going to reach out to this, this uh, shout out to him today. A guy was, he hears a knock at his door, and he opens up his door, and he finds a spine. It's just this little snail sitting down in front of him. So he picks up the snail, and he throws it across the street. Several weeks go by. One day he hears a knock at the door, so he goes and opens it again. And one day he can't see anything, so he looks down, and again he sees that snail. The snail looks down and says, <laughs> What the heck was that all about? <laughs> I know, you got to get it. That's kind of slow. Okay. Snail, slow, throw across the street. All right. If I got the I'll, I'll explain the joke if I got to. All right. So now, we're going to talk about rebuilding our focus. We've been talking about focus. We've been talking about focus before homecoming. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about focus now because with all the things that's going on in the world and with all the things that's happening around us, it is so easy to get so caught up in what we see. And you know, if you watch the news, no matter what channel you watch, it doesn't matter. Whatever channel you watch, they always overanalyze the news. Not only they overanalyze, they put their little spin on it. So depending on what channel you're watching, it depends on what spin you get. It is really be nice if they could just say, this is what's happening, get ready, Get prepared. So that's what I'm doing today is I'm saying this is what's happening. Get ready. Get prepared. God is getting ready to come back. But until before he does, the Bible says there's going to be that battle in Ezekiel 38 and 39. The battle that, 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 that after this battle, the Bible says that Israel will, you, will burn the other people's weapons, Russia and China and Iran and Iraq, burn their Weapons is fuel for seven years. Also, it says that, they're, that, that the, the blood is going to be up to the horse's bridle. It's going to take them seven months to bury the dead. So what's coming is not going to be very pleasant. Now, the whole trick of this thing is, with prophecy, is does the rapture happen before or after this battle? 
If it happens before, we have no idea what's going on except knowing the Word of God says Israel wins. But if it's after, then we're going to have to suffer some stuff too before we get out of here. So whatever it is, you just be prepared with God and know that God's got you. He's not going to let go of you. He's a very powerful, powerful, powerful God. And he's already told us years ago about what was coming. So he already knows because he's not just in yesterday. He's in today and tomorrow at the exact same time because he's eternal. <laughs> We've already seen all this. Now, rebuilding your focus. You got to, there's some rebuild points where there's some focal points. And they're so good, I'm only going to do five of them today. So there's five focal points today. And then there's going to be five next week. So, so here it goes. Rebuilding our focus. So many times we get so caught up in all the things going on around us that we lose sight of who it is that supports us and gets us where we're going. So God uses the rebuild mode to draw us out of complacency and out of collapse. You will find if you found yourself lately in complacency, then you'll find your spirituality beginning to collapse. In the book of Acts, every time they got complacent, God was blessing, and they had blessings overflowing, they got complacent. In the book of Acts, look it up. Every time the church got complacent, there was a spiritual collapse. And when there was a spiritual collapse, God would allow the enemy to attack in order to get their focus back and instead of, of being, being complacent, instead of that, what now happens is God draw, drew them out in the book of Acts out of complacency and drew out of them freshness and they just kept on going. Until the next time, again, an endless cycle. You know, we do that too. You know, God's blessing me. We're, we're in the middle of a battle. We're holding on to God. We're trusting Him. We see Him. We trust Him. We look to Him. And as soon as God answers and things calm down, we get complacent. And when we get complacent, then there comes a collapse. And here it goes all over again. So we want God to be, with our focus to draw us out of complacency and draw out of us freshness and cause us to keep on going. So now I see here it is, uh, rebuilding our focus. You know, uh, that's every one of us. Every day we should be doing that. Instead of getting stuck in one area, stuck in one thing, you know, one mindset, we need to be looking around and see what's going on. Look around us to see what's happening. Uh, look within us to see what God is doing. But we need to rebuild or let God help us rebuild our focus. So our focus should start on God and His Word. That's where it starts. You've got to look at God's Word. You're going to have to just look at God's Word, but you've got to look at God's ability. Do you know there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that God cannot do? Nothing. Y'all say it. Nothing. nothing. And the mission, our mission, is to know His Word and to trust Him and His ability, and then we're to go out and take care of business. I'm going to read the mighty armies just for the last few days. <clears throat> some of y'all are getting them. Some of you aren't. If you'd like to get Mighty Army, it's not a problem. It's free, and you get it. Uh, you get it every morning at 707. But I just want to, to uh, uh, read the last few Mighty Armies, just to like four of them. Because sometimes when I'm praying and seeking and stuff, <coughs> I don't always have a plan for how they're going to be. And then when I look back over the span, I realize, wow, God, you were, you were telling the story along the way. You were helping us. So, so this is <clears throat> Here it goes. Let's see. Let's take it back. Last week, of course, many times the wrong training took me to the right place. All right? And then Monday. Mighty Army, everything you've been through was preparation for where you are right now and where you can be tomorrow. Tuesday, Mighty Army, God has put everything you need on the inside of you to turn powerless moments into powerful moments. God's got you. Wednesday, if you focus on hurt, you will continue to suffer. If you focus on its lesson, you will continue to grow. And 
course, uh, uh, Thursday morning, earth is preparing for a war, heaven is preparing for a wedding, the redemption draws nigh. Friday, make sure, oh, here it goes. Make sure you're not the weapon formed against yourself, causing you not to prosper. Wow. Wow. That's heavy. Yeah, wow. I even wrote, ouch, but the best remark or explanation points. Right, yesterday, mighty army, you're about to get a second win, and when you do, the devil better watch out because you're going to take him out. He's messed with you far too long. And then this morning, mighty army, when you turn your worry into worship, God will turn your battles into blessings. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So, we've got to focus on God. And so, I want to read that Philippians one more time. I'm going to read it in, in a couple other versions. Uh, <clears throat> one of them is the Phillips translation. 12 to 14. Yet, yeah, my brothers, I do not consider myself to have arrived spiritually, nor do I consider myself already perfect. So I don't consider myself to have arrived spiritually, nor do I consider myself perfect spiritually, mentally, whatever. But I keep going on, grasping ever more firmly that purpose which Christ grasped me. My brothers, I do not consider myself to fully grasp it even now. But I do concentrate on this. I leave the past behind. And with my hands outstretched to whatever lies ahead, I go straight for the goal. My reward, the honor of being called by God in Christ. And then here's the message. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made. But I am well on the way. Reaching out for Christ who has so wonderfully reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means, I do not count myself an expert in all of these. But I've always got my own goal. Where God is beckoning us up onward to Jesus, I am off and running, and I'm not turning back. Wow. That's very, 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 very powerful stuff. So, here's what Satan wants to do. Anybody ever done that? You're riding down the road driving and all of a sudden you get distracted on the cell phone? Before cell phones you got distracted on the uh, scenery or you got distracted on the, 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 the uh, uh, stereo or kids in the back fighting. There's all kinds of things that can distract you. <clears throat> Let me tell you something about distraction. Listen carefully. Distraction is any type of activity, any type of action, and it's any type of attitude. Listen, any type of activity, action, or attitude does not mean it's sin. Doesn't mean you're doing something sinful. Doesn't mean it's going out drinking or carousing. Any type of activity. Sometimes it can be your work. Sometimes it can be your family. Sometimes it can even be a sickness. But something in your life that causes, it causes activity, action, or attitude that consumes you, consumes your time, and it consumes your interest to the point that God becomes a blur. Wow. That's very powerful, too. You know, this week, my, my wife and I went to Virginia, and we were just going we to deliver some more stuff uh, from her mom and dad's uh, estate to the family. And, and she was an artist. We had a bunch of paintings, very good paintings. And so all this stuff was going on. And we said, we're just going to relax. Well, we didn't relax because when we got there, there was all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, uh, after we got worked in one area, in another area, we had a, she had a cancer that's, that's got cancer. And, and we were trying to be there for him. And then when we finally tried to get away for a few days, just us, we wound up ministering every day. Every day. Counseling every day, every night. And even when we was leaving yesterday, trying to leave, here comes, you know, Dr. Chris Carter and his wife. And so again, the whole time that we were there, so again, God helped us not to get distracted. We were talking about, man, how God was blessing and how God was doing some mighty things, you know, and even I was talking to one man, and uh, he was outside of, 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 our, of our cabin, or whatever you call it, and he was outside. <coughs> and while I was talking to him, his mama got on the phone. And he said, Mommy, you can believe who I'm talking to. 
And she said, I have a lot of this, son. She said, I'm talking to a pastor, so I can't get away from it. Every time I turn around, they're sending me to him or he's coming around where I'm at, and they won't let me alone. And you know what she did? She started shouting. And she said, God's going to finally get you, son. <laughs> said, he surrounded you. Said, he sent him from North Carolina. Said, everywhere you look, God's got you. And he said, I know, Mama. I know. I got to go. She said, now, hold on. Listen to it. I know, Mama. I know. It was cool how God, the whole time, it was very powerful. But if you're not careful, something can take away all that interest. And all that about God. And when that damn when that happens, then it can become a sin. Because now it's preventing you from being all you can be for God. <coughs> so now, how many know this? Our focus has an unlimited value. <coughs> the devil doesn't want us to realize the potential. He doesn't want us to realize the power. He doesn't want us to realize the position of an undivided focus. He doesn't want us to know exactly what's going on. So here we go. We're going to talk about these 10 focal points. I'm going to do five today. I'm going to do five next week. So the very first focal point, these are all scriptures. All right? Look, I'm, I'm still under construction. I'm still under construction. Thanks for your patience. God's still working on me. God's still working on you. You know when God stops, you know when God will finally stop working on you? Is when you take your last breath. That's what it is when you take the last breath. So here we go. <clears throat> Number one, God has called you, and it wasn't to get you to this place so he can drop you. I know this stuff's going on crazy over in the Middle East. They're saying it's going on crazy here. There's all kinds of crazy, 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 and it's crazier all the time. Just know this, God didn't bring you here <coughs> to drop you. <coughs> This is our position. God knows where you're at. Philippians 1 6, 1 6 and 5 verse. For I'm convinced and sure of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will continue until the, until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. In other words, watch this. I love it. <clears throat> The good work in you is God's work. God began it, and God's going to complete it because He's the mighty God. Amen? Come on, give Lord a hand clap and pray. Come on, here. I dare you. Lord. You can't change my mind. I'm convinced that God's working the work. He's working the work in this church. This church ain't through. God's got something in this church that still has to be done. Think about Sharon and How many times could you have died? How many times have you had shipwrecked and you thought it was over and God said, no, it's not over. I still have something for you to do. Amen? <coughs> so, here we go. Number two. Get ready. He will build his church. This is our power. He's going to build his church. Not us. He's going to build his church. And the church is made up of people, not a building. So what? I tell you, this is that five version. I tell you, you are Peter, the Greek Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, Greek Petro, huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the powers of the internal, infernal regions shall not overpower it or be strong to its determined and hold out against it. Now, now you've heard me tell a lot, I'm alluding again, the gates, the gates of hell. <coughs> Think about something. <coughs> Wise men. If you look at the gates, in back in the day, the gates were a very powerful place. That is exactly where the wise men in the city met. Now, uh, that's where the governing was taking place at the gates. Lawyers met there. Court was held. Civil matters were taken care of at the gates. Punishment was dealt there and administered at the gates. Whenever the lepers came into the city, they had to go in through the gates. And they had special rags for them, and they had to wipe their hands and their bodies on these rags before they could go in. It was at the gate. It was, the thing about the gates are they're stationary. 
They're stationary. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That, that doesn't mean they're, they're trying to run over us. They're still, they're solid. It's us doing all the running. It's the time now to stop doing all the running. Face the gates and crash the gates. Amen? God's got us. God wins. Get up. Get up. Let God help us. We've got to protect the hedge around us. Let's take care of business. <coughs> God is so good. I don't know what I breathed up. But I don't like it. <coughs> Hold on. I'm allergic to his artificial flowers. <coughs> Here we go. We'll get a minute. Number three. <coughs> Look at that. Who's that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and there's the Son of God in the flames with them. Okay. Number three, he did not promise to deliver you from the fire, but to walk with you through the fire. Wow. Our protection and his presence. So, we read this, Isaiah 43. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now, there it goes, I'm sorry. There it is. So now, let's just break this down a little bit. All right? Fear not, I have redeemed thee. Here it is. He said, I created thee. Created thee. Jacob. When he was born, he was <coughs> Jacob. He was the supplanter. He had, he had a lot of mist, a lot, a lot of junk in the trunk. So through his life, he had to squeeze him. He had to form him. That's what that word means. Created means to shape. Form means to squeeze. And when he squeezed him, he became Israel. From being a supplanter with a bunch of junk in the trunk to being Israel. Amen? Some of y'all right now, you're in the squeeze. You wonder why I'm being squeezed so hard. It's because God's trying to form you into somebody that you have no idea you can be. Right? He said, I redeemed thee, which is salvation, but with the price. I have called thee. I have summoned thee. There's a shake, squeeze, salvation, summon. It says you belong to me. Which means you're saved. Amen. We're in a safe place. Number four. I love this. Get back there. Disappointments. Or just God's way of saying, I've got something better. Be patient. Have faith. Trust God. <coughs> Number four, there's more in store for your life and for your ministry. That's our potential. Remember, he's trying to break your focus so you can't see this. Hosea 10 and 4, or 10 and 12, it says, So to right, so, so, <coughs> so yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. <coughs> Hear what it said? Break up your fallow ground. One more time. Break up your <coughs> foul ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteous upon you. Now, how many is there were, uh, uh, let's see here. I've already, I, I messed that one up, that, that screen up, I think. Let's see here. Let me get it up there. I'm trying to get it. Let's see. No. All right, I didn't mess it up. I thought I had it. All right. 2 Timothy 1 to 6. That is why I will remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers, fan the flame, and keep burning. The gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. Now, you may feel like your purpose is dead and buried, but know the difference between burying and planting. If I bury something, I'm not expecting it to come back. If I plant something, I'm expecting it to come up and bloom. 
You're not dead. You're not buried. So, Father Graham. I remember when I was a little boy, we lived in Merritt. And we lived in Merritt, and there was all these fields all around the house. And I, I used to love to go out there after they would plant corn, especially. After they planted corn, especially when they planted the corn fields, and after they harvested the corn, <coughs> they just leave it idle for a while. But they leave it idle for a while. When they were first planting it, I could go there barefooted. And my feet, I could squash my feet in the in the dirt. It felt so good, so nice and cool. But after they harvested it, it wasn't like that. When I went out there barefooted, it hurt because my ground was hard. It had stumps in it from the from the harvest. It had all kinds of things in it, and it looked horrible. But they were planting the corn, it looked all nice and neat and organized and clean and clear. And now it looks terrible. It hurts your feet when you walk on it. That's called fallow ground. That's ground that's been harvested. And after the harvest is over, it gets hard. Maybe some of you here, God has used you for harvest. And after that harvest, after you did something for God, and lost your focus, or you got complacent, or you just want to sit down and rest a moment, and when you did, that ground here became fallow. It became hard. It became crusty. And God was saying in Hosea, break it up. Break it up. Let me use it again. I just love it when that hard ground was there and it was cold outside. It was terrible. And then when they were getting ready to plant something else, they come out there and they would disc it. And when they disc it, they would come through and they would disc that ground up. And they would go through so many times you couldn't even see much of the corn stalks because they just come through and kept going through and going through. And they got it back where it was easy to be used again. And then they made the rows again. And you can walk in again and you smell fresh. And you saw the birds coming whenever they were out there working. The, 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 the seagulls would follow and the other birds would follow. That's what God wants to do with us. That's what Paul, Paul told Timothy. Timothy was a young man. Timothy was afraid. Timothy was nervous. Timothy didn't think he could do what he was called to do. And so he said, look, you need to rekindle. Rekindle the embers. You fan that flame. You keep what's in you burning because I've done something. I'll give you a gift. you got to keep it burning. This is not the end for you. Matter of fact, remember, what you think is the end, you need to reposition your mind and refocus it. Because what you believe is an end, remember there's a difference in burying and planting. What you think is the end <laughs> can actually be an awesome new beginning. And there's one more. <clears throat> When you obey the voice of God, you're unstoppable. Amen? When you listen to what God's got to say, something very powerful happens. When we obey the voice of God, we're unstoppable by perseverance. Job chapter 2, verse 11. And the Lord utters his voice before his army, for his host is very great, and they are strong and powerful who execute, execute God's word. For the day of the Lord is great, and very terrible, and who can endure it? Job 2 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall purpose the thing in which I sent it. And finally, Proverbs 24, 16. The God of my trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is but one disaster uh, is enough to destroy the wicked. You ready? Get, Brandon, get ready to play something, bro. You gotta keep your focus. You gotta keep your focus through the pain to get those gains. Don't focus on your problems. Don't focus on your pain. Don't panic. Don't focus on your pain. Focus instead on the problems, on the power, 
and on the peace. Here's this week's challenge. Y'all get ready for the challenge and we get ready for you to pray. Look at that. Everybody's got a part of the puzzle. There's nobody in here that does not have a part of this puzzle. Everybody. Everybody. Don't say everybody. Everybody. Everybody's got a part of this puzzle. Get ready. This week's challenge. This week, make a constant effort to examine your focus. Examine it. When things are going on around you, when the distractions are coming, when everything's happening around you, is what is being sent your way, is it a task by God or a distraction by Satan? Think about it. Is it a task sent by God or is it a, a, a distraction sent by Satan? Examine your focus. While you're examining your focus, expect distractions. Examine the distraction, just like I said. You look at it. Is that distraction given by God in order to use you? Or is it sent by Satan as, Satan as a distraction to confuse you? Once you figure this out, eliminate the unnecessary. Once you eliminate the unnecessary, Examine your focus again. And you may have to do this again and again and again and again and again. Again and again and again every day. Examine your focus. Look for the distractions. Get rid of them if they are there to confuse you. And then expect God to use you. As you hone in your focus. As you begin to really focus on God and what He's doing, look around you and see what's happening. I remember as a little boy, if I got scared at night, I just cover my head up. Anybody ever do it? You know? Just cover your head up. Right now, what's going on in this world, we just can't cover our head up. The Bible says, like in the days of Noah, when the flood came and nobody even paid attention to it, they were married and given in marriage. That's okay we're having marriage because that's not a problem. The problem was the focus. They didn't even know. They were so busy focused on all this other stuff, so all the things in the world going on around them. They got so focused on the activities that, that in itself is not a sin until they didn't even pay attention to what was going on. We got to know what's going on around us. And so as you hone in your focus, know that God's going to use you. Well, let us focus right here. Follow one course until successful. Focus. Follow one course until successful. I wrote this up here. Wow, I don't know how many years, how many months, a year ago. And it's amazing. <laughs> that it fell out today. It's the acrostic that I wrote for focus. If your focus needs to be fixed, O on one thing. C, it needs to be Christ-centered. U, it needs to be untangled. S, it needs to be stretched. Wow. God's got us. Something special is happening. We got to be ready and know that Jesus Christ is on His way back. Everybody that's standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor. I really am having a problem keeping my focus. I'm looking in too many directions. Too much is happening, too many distractions. And it's preventing me from being all I can do for you. If you 
you're here right now, and you say that, when nobody's looking around and every head bowed, would you raise that hand and sound it to me? Thanks to restore my focus. Yes, Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Remember, when you're looking at your focus, you got to remember, always remember, fix the one thing. Make sure to untangle what's getting in the way. You be ready to stretch. Maybe you're here this morning, and part of that focus point is drawing closer to God. You really need Him closer in your life. Nobody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed, but you put that hand and say, Yeah, I can use a good I can use a good old dose of God too. It'd be nice if they get a good old dose because right now the stuff around me has got me about driven crazy. <laughs> Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.